My name is Zhuang Deng, and I'm an incoming postdoc at Columbia University, and I graduated from Harvard recently. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, our work about an improved analysis of robustness and generalization bands. Specifically, we will show robustness implies generalization via stronger data-dependent generalization bands. This paper is a joint work with Kenji Kawaguchi, Kari Liu, and uh, Jiaoyang Huang. As modern learning achieves remarkable performance in many areas such as visual pattern recognition and language processing, some fundamental questions such as generalization performance, aka the discrepancy between test and training error of neural networks have been attracting enormous attention. For example, modern neural networks uh, are severely over-parameterized. The number of parameters can be comparable to the number of samples, which is beyond conventional wisdom of learning theory. More specifically, classical learning theoretical bounds suggest that your model complexity should not be too big so as to reach an optimal generalization behavior. However, for deep learning, as mentioned, the traditional generalization bounds cannot work. Even if neural networks are severely overparameterized, it can still reach very good generalization performance. Actually, it has some special generalization pattern called double descent that attracts a lot of research efforts, but we will not talk about that in this talk. A beautiful article by Lanka points out three keys to demystify the behavior of modern learning, structured data, um, algorithm, and architectures. Here, by algorithm, uh, it means some specific optimization algorithms such as stochastic gradient descent, and by architectures, it means models such as neural networks, and in this talk, we will focus on the other proposed key, structured data, which means modern data sets such as MNIST or CIFAR-10. Those data sets are known to have special structures, which we will talk about at a moment later. Now we are ready to deliver our main topic about how to derive more advanced data-dependent generalization bounds. To further illustrate uh, modern data set structure, here we provide some preliminary experimental results. Let K be a partition of input space of real data sets, and Ts be the number of partitions with non-zero data points. One can think that we partition the space with small cubes or optional coverings in infinity mode. In this plot, the figure shows the values of k versus the cardinality of ts for real-life datasets with the partition being the inverse image of Ipsilon covering in randomly projected spaces. The projection reduced the value of k significantly, and yet we still have the cardinality of ts much smaller than k. In more detail, the sparsity in the projected space implies that the data lives in a low-dimensional manifold in the original space. The inverse image of each cell of the partition in the projected space forms an um, approximately low-dimensional manifold. Thus, it is sparse in the projected space. It approximately lives in a low-dimensional manifold in the original space. As a more direct visualization, here is the 2D visualization of CIFAR tens representation embedding after projection. Notice that the pre-trained models are very widely used in uh, transfer learning. Thus, uh, one can uh, think in many applications and input data truly has a low dimensional structure. However, for many traditional generalization bounds, such as random math complexity bounds, uniform stability bounds, and the robust generalization bounds, all those uh, bounds cannot directly reflect the input data structure. And especially for the robust generalization bounds, there are dominating terms that are even data distribution agnostic. In this paper, we will focus on the robust generalization bounds. Specifically, a learning algorithm is k optional robust if the input space can be partitioned into k disjoint sets, denoted by CKs, such that for any SC belong to the training dataset, if SC belong to the same partition CK, then the gap between the losses evaluated on S and Z can be bounded by Ipsilon. 
This is very interesting since robust optimization is an influential paradigm for dealing with noisy or uncertain data. Many optimization problems are sensitive to perturbations in their parameters. Robust optimization aims to find a solution to these optimization problems that is feasible with respect to all possible realization of noisy or unknown parameters. Moreover, a robust algorithm can be non-stable, thus robust generalization provides a new approach to derive generalization bounds. To be concrete, by classical result of Xu et al, if we have the losses bounded by the constant b and the algorithm is k epsilon robust, then with probability 1 minus delta, we have the following generalization bound. Here, the epsilon is because we are using those partitions, and the last term contains the number of partitions k, which will be a restriction when k is very large. Later on, we will show how to improve that by taking the sparsity of data sets. We here also mention some application of the robust generalization bounds. The first example is Lasso. Lasso is a workhorse of modern machine learning. Specifically, if we assume the input space is compact and take the loss functions as the absolute difference between the Y response and the output of the algorithm A of X component, the optimization can be formulated as regular empirical risk optimization with L1 penalty of the parameters. If we denote calligraphic N as the covering number of the space Z, then the algorithm is robust with parameters shown here. Here, I want to remark the number of uh, partitions is the covering number of Z under L infinity norm. This quantity is exponential to the input dimension of Z. Thus, this result will yield a loose bound if the input dimension is very small. Um, the other example is PCA, uh, which is trying to find the first D principal components via the following optimization. Again, we can see that k is the covering number of the space, which can be quite large if the dimension is very high. Now, let us formally introduce our main results. Under exact the same condition as Xu and Manus paper, where we assume the loss is bounded by B and the algorithm A is k epsilon robust, we have the following results. The first two terms is the same as the one in the theorem of Xu's paper. Here, as mentioned, uh, Ts are the indices of those partitions with non-zero data points. Also, I want to remark, even with zero data points in that partition, the underlying distribution of the data can still be non-zero in that partition. In that case, Xu's bound still need to take the partition into account, but our bound do not need to take that into account. Here, uh, we have a more detailed comparison. As discussed before, roughly speaking, the main difference is that we can replace the partition number k into cardinality of Ts. Our bound is more data dependent. Imagine if the, the, there are only very few data points, Xu's bound still requires a large number of k because the underlying distribution of data can be non-zero everywhere. However, ours can be quite small because we only care about those partitions with non-zero data points. For straightforward visualization, we consider the following scenarios. Figure 3 shows the values of k versus the cardinality of Ts for the real um, world dataset with partition ck being the optional covering of the input space. All the training data points of each dataset were used. As we can see, uh, we have the cardinality of Ts much smaller than k for real world data. To reduce the value of k, we additionally propose some uh, new method. Mm, for example, as we have unlabeled data in many applications, we can use those unlabeled data um, to choose ck's. And the key idea is that the choice of those ck's has to be independent of the label data used in training loss in our theorem. But it could depend on the unlabeled data. Otherwise expressed, given a set of unlabeled data, k tilde, k, x q k, we can choose those unlabeled data as the center of the clusters and uh, the partition can be formed to group each data point to the nearest uh, center as the, in that clustering. 
and we following some previous literature, we do some uh, data splitting in uh, label uh, in training data as uh, label data and unlabeled data. And figure four shows the value of k versus the cardinality of t s for the real world data with the partition c k being the cluster with the unlabeled data. As we can see, uh, even in that case, uh, we re significantly reduce k. The, the cardinality of t s can be much smaller than k. And the figure five we have shown before, it is uh, uh, basically the inverse image of if recovery in random projected space and we can see the cardinality of TS is much uh, smaller than K. Now we can also show the advance of our bands by some theoretical examples. Um, here first we provide a proposition. Basically it is saying that if we wreck the uh, probability of PKs uh, in a decreasing order, if it decrease fast enough, uh, then actually the number of um, uh, the cardinality of Ts is in the order of log uh, n, where n is the number of training sets, the uh, training data. And uh, again, uh, we use the lasso as the concrete example. Recall that k is the covering number on the L infinity norm by Xu's bound and can be large when the dimension of the input space is high. Given a fixed number of training data, if we have a distribution with small variance in many coordinates, as we constructed, where the part of the coordinates are distributed as very concentrated Gaussian, then the cardinality of Ts can be approximately p. If p is small, our bound can be much tighter. So, uh, as we can show, there are these parameters chosen such that the variance of the p uh, of the remaining um, r equals to d minus p coordinates uh, is small. Our bound is much tighter because actually uh, our the cardinality of Ts is roughly uh, just uh, an exponential to the power of p instead of d if we use Xu's uh, method directly. And as another concrete example, we want to compare with uh, uniform stability. Algorithmic stability is the key to ensure generalization ability of a learning algorithm. Among different notions, uh, uniform stability is arguably the most popular one, which has exponential generalization bounds given training data uh, sets S and the learning algorithm that outputs a function AS. Uniform stability considers the worst loss change by removing, re removing a single data point. We consider regularized uh, least square regression, which is the risk minimizer, which is L2 penalty. For simplicity, we only consider one dimension k for the parameter. We can show that when the data distribution is assumed, assumed to be a linear model with outlier, our bound can be much tighter than the one obtained via uniform stability, as long as the p square divided by lambda is very large. Here, the lambda is the penalty coefficient. At the end of this talk, uh, I want to briefly talk about our new technique contribution, which could be of its own interest. The key technical hurdle is to avoid an explicit square root k dependence for the following form, where ai is a non-active function. Traditional bounds like P, bhc inequality will have square root k dependence, but we use this key lemma. When pi is approximately 1 over k, we recover bhc inequality. But when all the weights are on a specific i, such as p1 is equal to 1, then other pi is equal to 0, then we have some over square root pi is approximately 1. Our results interpolate across cases. Thanks for listening.